Okay, the question was asked, what do I think of the uh, dynamic traction? <clears throat> Here's what I think. This is the grand opening of the CDPC, the traction clinic in Victoria. Uh, this is just the ad that was sent to me by a, a group of neurosurgeons and said, which scares me a lot, what did I think about this as treating their patients? So. You can't really see it there, so let me just enlarge some of the parts. Here's what computerized lumbar traction treats. Everything. Fibromyalgia. Carpal tunnel is good. I don't know how you're going to treat carpal tunnel by pulling on the spine, but hey, don't let that stop you. We can take care of it. Okay, that's fair enough. How does it work? Well, phase one is the neuro decompression system, which is a decompression, is a table with an advanced computer. Advanced computer. <laughs> right. After a consultation with a doctor, each patient is given a customized treatment plan. See, this is pattern specific, except they all get the same treatment. Uh, and it's the, the computer knows. The computer knows how to pull on the back, so as only to pull on the affected level. How the computer knows that, I have no idea. And how it manages that trick, I don't know either. But never mind, it's magic. Now, that's not enough. It, goes, it's, it gets better. Here's phase two. Phase two is you get to breathe oxygen. Not what you're breathing now, but, <laughs> but real oxygen. And it will encourage healing of the joints and discs, which aren't really damaged anyway, but never mind. You're breathing out. But that, it gets better. Here's phase three. Phase three is my favorite. We have a synergy of 12 herbs and spices, right from the kernel. <laughs> and, and we have a liquid miracle drink, which contains, wait for it, amino acids. Wow. Is this ever good stuff? $5,000 for a course of 20 treatments, five grand. Who needs it? Well, let's just have a look. Your doctor is a naturopath, not an MD. This one is not run with chiros, but there's several are. One in Toronto is. The cost, it's a free consultation to decide whether or not you need to be treated. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> but you know how we know for sure? Because you bring your MR, and using the MR or the x-rays, they are, get it, usually conclusive. Don't you love it? False positive rate on MR, today's paper, 90%. Just think about this. I, you know, a thousand years ago, when I was a young pup, I wanted to put together a studio for treating back pain using blue lights. And it was going to be pe peopled by very attractive attendants of either sex, depending on your preference. And it was going to be comfortable, and there was going to be music. And the gimmick was, I was going to give you your money back if you were not better within six weeks. A money back guarantee. Natural history of back pain, 60 to 80% better in six weeks. Think about it. If you're not better, I give, you, I give back 40% of the money, and everybody says the guy is so honest, if it doesn't work, he'll give you your money back. And all I'm doing is conning you with natural history. Damn it. They beat me to it. You know, no blue lights, but it's exactly the same scam. You know what scares me most about this? The treatment system has been so revolutionary that the success rate has been between 80 and 90 percent. Cure everybody of carpal tunnel, everything else. Referrals have been increasing from surgeons and medical doctors. This was sent to me by a group of neurosurgeons asking me if they, I thought this was valid treatment for their patients. Does that scare you or what? I mean, we're the healthcare professionals. I mean, what, what hope has the public got? This is what's out there if you don't use simple pattern recognition 
if you don't just say you're a pattern two and I'm going to get you to sit in a chair and slump forward ten times every hour, you can spend $5,000 and go have a computer stretch your spine. And guess what? There will be patients who will say, that's too simple. I want magic. I want flashing lights. I want, and I'll mortgage the house to go get it. We've got a real sales job. I mean, this is, this is the frustration to me. It's not that back pain is so difficult. It's not. It's, it's, it's remarkably predictable. I mean, I spend my life talking to people and trying to get patients, trying to get them to do these things. If I can recognize a pattern and I can lay out a program, I can get a positive response. And if I can't, then I don't have a pattern. I have a problem. And now I go back and behave like a doctor and sort it out. If I could get you guys to do exactly the same thing, to just have that kind of confidence, to say, I know this syndrome, I know this pattern, I know what I can do to help you, then we go a long way to stopping this. Now, the question hasn't been asked yet, what are you going to call it? You can't say to the patient, well, I think you're a pattern one slow responder because they don't know what you're talking about. Translating from our jargon to the public is whatever you are comfortable doing. I tend to call pattern one patients discogenic. I say it's a sore disc. Sometimes, some jurisdictions, some comp jurisdictions, if I say it's discogenic, they lose their benefits because it's judged a pre-existing condition. So in that jurisdiction, I never say it's discogenic. I say it's mechanical. What do I care? The words need to be non-threatening. They need to be easily comprehended. And how you say it is up to you. But when I talk internally, when I talk to doctors or therapists that use the system, I want you to tell me it's a pattern one fast responder. And then I know exactly. I mean, think about the shorthand. Think what you've told me. You've told me I've got a patient who has pain on, on flexion, which is pain-free on extension, that requires repetitive movement, blah, 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 blah. All of that with the, with the conversation. That simple. That, that comfortable in dealing with this problem. It stops being magic. It stops being weird. It all becomes logical. Tomorrow morning, when we sit down again, and I do hope you all make it back tomorrow, we're going to take that case study that we looked at this morning, and we're going to reread it through a, another set of eyes. And you will be amazed at just how simple that case is. It's, it's not confusing. It's not difficult. It's not even very challenging to sort out what's going on and what we can do about it. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. So this, this is where we will end up at the end of the day. But this is where, unfortunately, we go if we don't do what we are trying to do. A couple of things, and then we're going to bring up the, 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 the three of us, and we'll sit and we'll talk, and then we'll go home. I was asked to comment about furniture. Um, furniture, depending on the pattern, you know, makes a difference. If I'm a pattern one, then I hate to flex. I hate overstuffed chairs. I hate big couches that you sink into. You know, and they're, they're, they're given as being always you know, this really a comfortable couch, and you go into it, and then you can't get back out. And when you sit there for a little while, you think, oh, this is good. And then you think, no, it's not so good. Oh, my back's killing me. If I'm a pattern two, I'm quite happy there, but there aren't that many pattern twos around. So the, the furniture basically is whatever is comfortable. There's lots of stuff, ergonomic stuff, written about the chair height and feet on the floor and arms at the right height and blah, blah, blah. And it goes on and on and on. A good lumbar roll and a reasonably <coughs> decent chair and you're home free. It's a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks for an ergonomically correct chair. You know, ergonomics correct depends on the pattern of pain. Obus form. You all know what obus form is. The, the fellow who invented the obus form, a fellow named Frank Roberts, Frank developed the original obus form to treat his own back pain. Frank, in looking back now, because in those days we didn't have the patterns, was a pattern too. Frank's original obus form had a hole in the lumbar section. There was no support there. Because when Frank sat, he liked to slump, because he was a two, and he slumped into the hole of the form, and he felt comfortable. And he marketed the original obus form with a great big hole in the lumbar region. And nobody liked it, because most people are pattern ones. 
and the form didn't work. So they covered it with fabric, and then they put a little sticky pad on top of the fabric to gradually force them into extension, which is what most people like. So it's you know, ergonomically designed by somebody who unfortunately had an atypical or unusual pattern of back pain. You know, it's what works for you. It's what, if you're a pattern, you know what makes you feel better, go do it. And our job is to see to it that the patterns are recognized, that almost as important as recognition of pattern is the elimination of all the scary stuff. A pattern that is clearly defined and responsive is not a red flag. If the pattern is not there, if you've, if you've done your homework and you can't make it fit, then start thinking. Then pull out the stops and become a doctor and start doing all the stuff that we talked about this morning. But the way we've always done it, to begin at the, at the wrong end, and to have this abnormal, enormous differential diagnosis makes no sense. Turn it upside down. Four categories. You'll catch 90% within those four buckets. And the 10% that fall through, that don't fit, they're the 10% that you should start worrying about. So when I get into a clinic and I'm running through the clinic and I say to the patient, where's your pain the worst? And they say, well, it's right here in my buttock. And I say, is there ever time in your day, best time of day when the pain stops and then it comes right back? And they say, yep, yep, it goes away completely if I sit for the, you know, and I say, you say completely, you mean it's absolutely gone? Yes, it's absolutely gone. I just turned my brain off. I'm done. I got no red flag worries. I got no, oh my God, I'm still going to do my physical. I'm still going to do my saddle. I'm still going to ask bowel bladder, blah, blah, blah. That's routine. But in terms of am I struggling to think this one through? No, it's over. You're a mechanical pattern one. We're on our way. It really changes how you see bats, how you treat them. It's amazingly comfortable. For those, and I've been doing that. I remember way back when I first started trying to do it this way and how nervous I was not to take an x-ray or, oh my God, I don't know what this is. I'm going to tell them to do something and I don't have a diagnosis. You get past that. You think, this is fun. It's, it's, I recognize the pattern. I hear what you're telling me. I know what to do for it. My confidence level goes up. Therefore, I transfer my confidence to my patients who hear me saying, ah, oh, I know what this is. I could deal with it. And it's a disc or it's a ligament or it's whatever I want to translate it to. Go for it. Last group that we haven't talked about is pattern four. It's a very quick conversation. Pattern fours require posture correction, and they require it with abdominal strength. Pattern fours, if, if they, they, we talked about the little guy with his round stomach and his extension posture, if I can get him to suck his belly in and hold it in, then I can improve his walking distance. The measure of success in pattern four, neurogenic claudication, is walking distance. It's not pain. These people don't, pain is not their problem. If they stop walking, they stop hurting. But they can't function. The walking distance of 100 yards, as Daryl's case this morning, isn't enough to make me live the life I want to live, so I need to change it. And I do that by changing my posture, by controlling my abdominals by doing the old-fashioned pelvic tilt, which is what the physios used to teach before McKenzie hit the scene, and just tucking my belly and rolling my pelvis, which reduces my lordosis and basically lets me walk further. Can I get a 62-year-old woman who's never been in a gym in her life to do core? Not bloody likely. All right? Worth a try, but it ain't going to work. The good news, and you've heard this this morning, is that surgically we have something to offer the neurogenic claudicans. We actually have, it's the one place where spine surgeons really do predictably good work. We do good work in lots of places, but neurogenic claudicans are just absolutely waiting for us. So if you cannot make it happen, you cannot get the commitment to improve the posture, improve the, the core, then that's a decent referral. The other group that does well with core is the pattern one slow. The patient who hurts to extend, hurts to flex, hurts everywhere, they benefit from better abdominal posture control. And they, again, are a group that needs to be traded. I don't exercise my twos. I don't exercise the one. If they want to work out, that's great. Fitness is great. Motherhood is great. Apple pie is great. I mean, these are all things you 
you know. But if you really are interested in who gets the best bang for the buck, it's the pattern one slow and the pattern four. And if you can get them to do it, good on you. The one thing I, I, I always tell my exercising patients is that, and particularly if you're dealing with core, it takes months to make a difference. Any of you guys that do as I do and work out regularly and then fall off the wagon for six months and then go back and look at yourself in the mirror and think, God, did I go out of shape that quickly? Find out that in three weeks you got your biceps back and six weeks you got your pecs back and your belly is still hanging over your belt buckle. And six months later, it's still hanging over your belt buckle, but gradually it reduces. It takes a long time to do core. I tell the patients the first three months is an act of faith. Nothing will change. You won't feel any better. Your walking distance won't change. It's up to you. Go for it or not, but be patient. Of course, they come back in a week and a half and say, it's not working yet. And I say, what did I tell you? And on we go. That's the, that's, the question was, what about active exercise? Active exercise is not a pain control. Active exercise is a prevention, and it's not even prevention, because you can't prevent back pain. Two-thirds of back pain occurs spontaneously. I say to my patients, you know, even good drivers have accidents, but they have fewer of them. So if I can get your back in shape, I can't guarantee you'll never have another day's pain, but I can guarantee fewer attacks, shorter duration, more rapid control. But that's afterwards. That's after we're past what we've been talking about today, which is basically how am I going to get rid of the acute episode, and that's with posture, exercise, positioning, and there we go. That's kind of a wrap-up of, of that end of it. Um, 